Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I have a short video here about spindle vibrations. So I'm trying to get the spindle RPM to be increased in this PM25 MV milling machine. Made a little apparatus in one of my other projects here to double the RPM, and it worked, it worked okay, but I noticed there was some vibrations around 2500 RPM. So I thought it might be the way that I built that apparatus, that, that uh, speed doubler. So I took it off. I've gone back to the stock motor arrangement, and I've also swapped out the bearings in this, this carrier. I don't, I don't have the spindle in here right now, I just have the splined um, upper piece that the spindle slips into. Swapped out the bearings in this, or replaced the stock bearings for uh, notchy bearings that are rated for higher RPM. And so here we go. So I, f I figured I'd try to start diagnosing this problem at this point. The notchy bearings are definitely better. I can run 2,500 RPM. Um, that's the max RPM with this current setup. And those bearings don't get warm. But the vibration is still here. So I know you can't really feel the vibration, but I have this app on my mobile phone that's going to show you the vibrations. So there you go. See, they show up around 2,500 RPM. They disappear around 2,000. They show up around 2,500 RPM. So that's weird, right? What's causing that? I think I know what's causing it. There is no axial preload in the way that this assembly is put together. There's, there's no nut, there's, there's no, nothing to draw these bearings down and, and take the, the, put a, some kind of preload on them. So that, you know, bearings, all bearings have some clearance. And if it, you could see, if you could feel this, there's, there's just a little bit of motion on those bearings. Uh, so without the preload, there's nothing to, to take up that space. So let me turn this back on, get those vibrations back. And I'm going to demonstrate that. So look, I have a rag. I'm going to very carefully put some pressure on this, and look at that, the vibrations go away. No more vibrations. Take it off, we have vibrations again. So I'm pretty confident, I am very confident that that is the source of those vibrations. I think it's just a, the design of this, this assembly. So until I uh, get a bigger lathe, I'm, I'm not really going to be successful. I, w I actually want to get rid of this, this whole apparatus because I don't really use the quill. Um, but for now, I, I need to leave it in there until I can do something better. So my plan to fix this, and I think it's pretty easy to fix it, is when I put the spring back in there, that's going to apply some pressure. And I'm also going to increase the tension by putting these things in. So these are the little spacers that I make on my 3D printer. And the reason why I made those was uh, there's, there's a little bit of clearance. There's some clearance between these splines and, and the spindle. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but the, the, the feature that they, they slip into, there's a little bit of clearance. And, you know, you can get a little bit of a rattle and a vibration. So I made these bushings that kind of fit in there snugly, and they, they just take that, they take that slack up. They don't let that, those two pieces bounce around. But what this will also do is help to further compress this spring when it's in there. So I believe what will happen when I draw all this thing down, it, it'll be just like me putting that rag on top of that uh, assembly and pushing down. It's going to apply some preload, and I think all those vibrations will go away. Well, all right, I hope you found that interesting, and um, maybe this will help you with your homebrew DIY conversion projects. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, and please be safe, and we'll catch you later.